you guys had a lot of questions about becoming a data analyst. So I figured we can answer some of them. All right, we'll start off with a good one. What was the technical interview like for my position and how did I prepare for it? Well, coming out of college, I was actually an intern for the company I work at now. Now, when I got my internship, the actual internship was about software testing. So really nothing to do with statistics, which is what my degree was in, nor data analysis, which is what I wanted to get into. So through that interview, I kind of let them know, like, I do have a lot of experience with some of the softwares that you are going to have me be testing through school or self projects. But that's not really my end goal. I don't want to be a software tester for the rest of my life. I wasn't super interested in IT. So I let them know that and they were willing to work with me and they said, okay, I, I think if you do a good job at this position, it will help you get your foot in the door and you'll be able to find other positions more suited to what you wanted to do in the future. And that's exactly what happened. Coffee break. So through my testing role, I was working with R, I was working with things like Tableau and I got into contact with somebody else at the company who was looking for somebody who could help build a dashboard in R Shiny. And I had a lot of experience with R. I was a statistics major. We used R all the time. So I was able to utilize that knowledge from R and the connections I had made with different teams throughout that software testing role to be able to actually help part time on this other project. And through that work, I did good enough that they were willing to work with me after I finished my internship and actually allow me to interview for one of the internal analyst positions. So Coming into that interview, it was more so personality fit types of questions. I was already in the company. They already knew I could do the job that they wanted me to do because I was hired full time to do what I was doing part time as an intern. So I didn't really have too many technical questions. I know this was a long winded way and it's probably not going to work out like this for everybody. So I'll try to do my best to answer what a technical interview for a position like this would look like. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be super, super in depth. I think for an entry level analyst, the most technical capability questions they're going to ask you are mostly going to be around SQL. Maybe depending on the role, they might ask you some Python or R related questions. But the really the main thing you're going they're going to want to know is if you can pull data from different databases, combine them, manipulate them, um, do joins, determine what primary keys and foreign keys are on different tables, and be able to work in that sort of frame of mind. So as long as you have some SQL knowledge, I think you will most likely be okay in a technical interview. And we're in the process of hiring somebody on our team. And really, the types of technical questions we're asking are more so, how would you go about solving this pro problem? Not necessarily, hey, here's some SQL, what's wrong with it? Or hey, could you write SQL that does this? It's more so, okay, tell us how you would think about going through the problem, not necessarily writing code because we want to know how people think most of the people applying to the, these jobs are going to have some level of technical ability. So just keep that in mind. Hopefully that helps. All right. The next question comes from Kilua or Kilua. Um, he said, what skills should someone studying statistics start learning? I studied statistics. A lot of people on the channel want to study or are studying statistics, but they really want to get into a data analyst type of field or a data type of field. So this is applicable to anybody who wants to become a data analyst, but how much time does each skill require to learn and what path could each skill lead you toward? I'd be thankful if you would like to provide more details about the data analyst job, hours of working salary. So really anybody who's studying statistics and wants to become a data analyst, there's really three to four things that you need to learn. The first I would say is probably going to be something like Excel. Now I know this is super basic, but in Excel, you're able to work with data in a table type of format. You're able to do some basic manipulations. You're able to do some basic, um, you know, cross tables or whatever they call them in Excel. You're able to do some basic stuff that will set you up for success in the future. After you learn something like Excel, I would learn SQL because that's kind of the actual coding language to pull data from databases. And as a data analyst, 90% of my job is pulling data from different sources around the company, combining them and bringing them into useful results. Um, so that would be the second thing I would learn as a statistics student wanting to become a data analyst. The third would be some type of visualization tool, maybe something like Tableau or Power BI. I would strongly lead towards Tableau because most companies use that from what I've seen. And then the last is where you can actually get into some coding to be able to build dashboards and build custom reports. So something like R or Python. And I think these will set you up great to become a data analyst and maybe even in the future with some advanced degrees or some advanced knowledge in job, I think you could become a data scientist as well. So hopefully that answers your question. Kalua, thanks for asking. 
All right, the next one is from Nice Enjoyer, which, okay. Uh, but what do comps look like in data analyst roles? And I'm assuming he's talking about pay. Also, how does the promotion pyramid look like and what is the ballpark of the chances of getting promoted to each level? So I would say um, the role I found was actually much higher than what is normal in my area, but I was able to find remote work during the pandemic. So I won't say that's necessarily true. It's probably gonna go more so based off of where you're located than just a typical role in the United States. And I'm only speaking from the United States perspective. I don't know what's going on in the world of data science or data analytics outside of the United States. Um, and to be fair, in the United States, it's such a large country that, you know, I can only estimate for the rest of the country. But I, but being a data analyst is absolutely a good career. There's a lot of um, upward mobility, I think, available in that field. And also, even as an entry-level data analyst, you're not making bad money. Even if you're making on the lower scale for a data analyst, you're not making bad money by any means. Um, the, as far as the promotion pyramid goes, for us, it looks something typically like about two years or two to three years to actually go from like a beginner entry-level analyst um, to more of a senior analyst. And the way we consider a senior analyst is just anybody with some experience in the field. So if you're coming over from another analyst role, you're probably coming over as a senior analyst. But if you're being promoted from internal, like I said, it's probably two to three years of good work. And then from there, you can go to like a lead analyst role. That's another promotion. Um, I'm pretty sure those promotions are probably something like 10 to 15% uh, of what your salary would be. And as far as chances, at least at our company, it's not easy to get promoted. Um, there's not really like, oh, you're doing such an amazing job. We're just going to promote you right away, which kind of stinks, but it's also kind of nice because you kind of know your path. Um, and if you really are waiting on that promotion, I think it's a good idea to look at other companies because now that you have experience as an analyst, once you've actually started as an entry level analyst, um, I think moving to another company is where you can kind of just go right into one of those senior roles. And so that'd be something I'd look to do if you were really really passionate about increasing your salary um, which some people don't really care they just want to stay at the same company some people that you know they're there to work and make money um, and that totally makes sense so keep that in mind hope that helps the next question comes from purple apples when it comes to working in data science and analytics is it more advantageous to get a degree in data science or statistics currently i'm an undergrad in statistics and planning to get a master's in statistics as well but as i'm leaning towards data science as a career i'm considering getting a master's in data science instead on the other hand i would think that having a master's in statistics leave more leaves more doors open but more clarity on this would be appreciated so it sounds like you're really deciding between data science and statistics master's degree and honestly i think depending on where you go to school um, that's definitely something to keep in mind. If you're going to just, you know, some run in the middle state school, no offense, I went to a state school, it's totally fine. Um, I think either one of those degrees is probably going to give you the same opportunity. And I think it's going to be a good opportunity. However, if you're going from undergrad to master's and then into a career and you're expecting to just like have it handed to you because you have a master's degree, I would be a little cautious in that just because if you don't have experience, like kind of going back to the last question, if you don't have that experience, employers are really going to have a hard time trusting that you're capable of doing the job at a high level, even if you have a master's degree. Now, that's just my opinion. I don't have a master's degree. But I do agree that you are right. I think statistics is probably going to leave more doors open. But as long as you have a well-rounded education, especially if you're going to like a good school, either one of those master's degrees are going to be super helpful in finding a job. They're going to give you a lot of experience, and hopefully through those opportunities, you can gain more internship knowledge and actual experience, which will help you get a job in the long run. So I know I didn't really give you an answer. I think both degrees are worth it. I would lean statistics, but it honestly matters, or it depends on where you're going to school. So um, you're going to have to make that decision for yourself, but thank you for asking Purple Apples. All right, the next question is asking about AI and how it affects data scientists and data analyst jobs in the future. Well, um, good news and bad news. I'll start with the bad news. Um, AI is definitely going to affect data science and data analyst roles. It'll probably affect pretty much every job under the sun except maybe the trades. And even to some capacity, it'll probably affect the trades um, as well. Maybe not actually taking people's jobs in the trades, but it's going to change the way they work. However, for data analysts and data scientists, it may seem like it's coming a lot closer to home. But I assure you, at least at our company, we're looking forward to the AI revolution 
not because we're saving a bunch of money and firing a bunch of people, but because it's going to make the people that we already have more efficient. And I think the only concern that I would have towards AI in terms of data science or data and analysis is the people who don't adapt and begin to use AI to help them complete their jobs more efficiently. The people who do that are probably going to lag behind. They're going to do less work. It's going to take them more time to do less work um, than somebody who's using AI to help them. Now, there's plenty of videos on YouTube of data analysis applications using AI to make them make their jobs more easy, and even even sometimes actually taking over part of your role. But for a data analyst, that's actually awesome because 75 to 90 percent of your job can be the tedious, boring documentation. Whether you're you know you're using a new database or you're um, creating a new database, maybe doing some data engineering or ETL pipelines. You have to document those, especially in a company where, you know, what you're doing is going to affect the bottom line of your company or it's going to affect real people and it's going to have like real outcomes like I work in health insurance. So that affects people's lives. It affects their health. Um, I need to be able to document data and make sure that whoever's looking at it, including me, understands that to its full capability. And that's the type of thing where AI will help you out. Because that is the most boring and tedious yet important processes, you know, a data analyst does is documentation and things like that. And AI helps, you know, eliminate a lot of that boring, wasted, tedious time. That's a positive effect, in my opinion. Um, and of course, even with the more advanced stuff, fitting models, building visualizations, I think AI is going to help. Um, and I just think it's going to make us more efficient and hopefully help data analysts get to actually analyze more data rather than doing some of the boring and tedious work that goes into being a data analyst. So hopefully that makes you feel a little better. All right, next question comes from Suchin. Should I start learning about databases and algorithms ASAP if I want to go into data science? I'm not a data scientist. I can't speak too much on this. Um, but honestly, I know those are some of the classes you're probably going to take in like a data science geared um, curriculum. However, I don't think that's what um, data scientists are going to be using on a daily basis. I'm not saying it's not helpful, but data scientists, uh, data science in reality is probably a lot more hands-on uh, than some of those classes. So, yes, they're important to take if you want to be a data scientist, but I don't think you need to start learning them ASAP. Uh, definitely take them in your coursework if that's what you're in, uh, but also... I think doing a little bit of slow self-learning on the side and those things is totally fine as well. So I wouldn't worry too, too much. Um, I would more worry about getting experience in the field and being able to show that you know how to do some of the work um, required of a data scientist. And the second question is, should I start leak code? I've never done leak code. I have a data analyst job. However, leak code sounds like a great way to get some practice in, and I'm all for getting practice, but I definitely, again, strongly suggest self projects and gaining some experience that way. So thank you, Suchin. Next question. What's my favorite probability distribution? Um, probably binomial, but it's been so long since I've taken a statistics class. I don't remember what my favorite was. Um, let's just say binomial. All right. And rounding out the questions today is Usman. He says 12th pass and trying to learn from YouTube and hoping to get a job without even graduating in any field question mark. That doesn't sound too much like a question, but if it is difficult, if it is very difficult to get a data analyst job without CS degree, then which coding profession would you recommend for people like us? If it is not that hard to get a data analyst job without CS degree, then how much time one have to put on daily basis and what strategy to follow? Watching tutorials and practicing duration to be able to get a good paying remote job. How much months and years will be required to get that entry level job? Well, it sounds like what you're doing or what you're saying is you have a CS degree or you're in the middle of getting a CS degree. Well, one, I wouldn't say it's any more difficult or non-difficult without a CS degree to get a data analyst job. I did not have a CS degree. I have a data analyst job. I think I have a little bit of experience um, with answering this question, but I would say I'm actually better prepared as a statistics major than maybe a CS major would be for a data analyst role. Now, I would say that's typical. Um, but I'm sure there's some data analyst roles that are using more coding, but I don't even think CS majors necessarily do that much coding, um, like a data analyst would. So I wouldn't worry about too much about not having a CS degree and trying to get a data analyst role. 
However, your second point is much more important. How much time putting in on a daily basis and what strategy to follow to get a data analyst job without a CS degree? Um, well, I would say definitely self projects. I think watching tutorials and practicing duration is great. Um, doing some Self-practice is always great. Learning SQL, like I said earlier in the video with the four things you should learn as a statistics major to become a data analyst. But doing self-projects, I know I've mentioned it a few times, is probably the most important thing. This shows an employer, okay, I know how to start with a problem, find data that you think will solve that problem, do some exploratory data analysis, format the data, and then present those results in a unique and informative way. And packaging that all up into one self-project and then you can put it on your resume, you can put it on a portfolio, and you can show employers, hey, I know how to go from that start to finish, and I know what it takes to become a data analyst. Now, in terms of becoming, getting a good paying remote job, the job market is crazy right now, at least in the U.S. I don't know how it is for whatever you are located, Uzman, but I will say I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for watching, guys.